Your doctors probably informed you of the nature of your heart problem and the course of action he is planning to take. Having specific tests on the electrical system of your heart most likely has you concerned and maybe even a little worried. The electrophysiology study is a procedure that has been performed in major medical centers for many years. The information it provides can be vital to your health. The purpose of this video is to help you understand and prepare for your upcoming electrophysiology study. A better understanding of the procedures and their purpose will allow your study to be easier and less stressful. Dr. George J. Klein, a specialist in the procedure, explains. The heart is basically a, a pump whose job it is to pump blood to various parts of the body. And we can think of it ha as having two components. We can think of it as a mechanical pump, which is one system. Uh, and we can think of it also as having an electrical system, uh, a wiring system, if you will, which we call the cardiac conduction system. It's the job of the cardiac conduction system, or the wiring, if you will, to uh, time the heart, to tell the heart how fast to go, and to make sure that the impulse gets uh, spread to all parts of the heart so that it contracts in a normal, rhythmic way. We generally see uh, two categories of patients who are referred to the arrhythmia service. Uh, one category is where their heart rates are inappropriately slow. Those patients are generally candidates for pacemaker therapy, and we don't necessarily have to do electrophysiological or detailed arrhythmia studies with these patients. The second large category is when their hearts go too fast and inappropriately fast. Uh, those patients are frequently candidates for uh, electrophysiological studies if they've had very serious uh, symptoms or their symptoms have, are troubling them a great deal or if they've tried many medications on a trial and error basis and they have not been satisfactory. All of us feel a sensation of rapid heart beating when we exercise and that is not an uncomfortable situation because it's appropriate for the uh, situation. However, if you're sitting perfectly at rest and all of a sudden your heart beats at 200 beats per minute, you feel a very, or you may feel a very uncomfortable sensation of a rapid heart breathing that's inappropriate for your level of exercise. These people are coming down to where they want a definitive answer to exactly what the problem is and what can we do about it. We describe electrophysiological testing to patients uh, as uh, doing an electrocardiogram from in, inside the heart, and that is frequently the analogy I use. It allows us to determine where the rhythm problem is coming from, it allows us to turn it on and turn it off using our stimulator and therefore study it. So with our little tubes inside the heart, recording the electrical activity of the heart uh, in detail, we are able to track down rhythm problems as if you would with a, a Geiger counter and get to the source of the arrhythmia problem. It's important to inform your doctor of any allergies you may have, especially to medicines. It's also important for your doctor to know the exact names and dosage of medicines that you are taking. Bring them with you to the hospital or write them down. Your doctor may advise you to stop taking certain medicines for one or more days before admission to hospital for your electrophysiology study. This will give the doctor more accurate test results. Before the EP study, the electrophysiologist will discuss the test with you. Besides explaining the test, the doctor will discuss potential risks and complications. You probably have been a patient in a hospital before, so specific times for meals and medicines, how your bed works, how to use the call lights, and visiting hours should be familiar to you. The nursing staff will help describe the course of events during your hospital stay. Electrocardiogram, chest x-ray and blood tests will be conducted. If you wish, the nurse may take you for a tour of the EP lab.
Most patients who visit our laboratory are quite uh, surprised to see the amount of equipment that is used in the laboratory and the complexity of that equipment. It usually causes patients to become quite apprehensive um, at the time they enter the laboratory. However, uh, all of the equipment is explained at that time, the electrocardiogram equipment, the x-ray equipment, the way the bed moves, uh, and uh, all of the other equipment is explained by the registered nurses in the department while they're being hooked up to that equipment. And I think this allays a lot of fears that the patients may have on entering the laboratory. A very specialized team conducts the procedure. The chief doctor does all the program stimulation or pacing. Another doctor is in control of the wires that go inside the patient. If any adjustment of the wires is required, he can do that and ensure the signals are very good. One nurse keeps the log of the computer record. If a certain portion of the study is required later, we'll know exactly where it is recorded. Another nurse looks after the paper recordings that are obtained and keeps a log of everything that goes on the paper. In general, uh, patients are admitted to hospital for electrophysiological studies, although in recent years we have been admitting people directly for electrophysiological studies and doing them as outpatients. Uh, we ask that they not have anything to eat or drink uh, for 12 hours uh, prior to the study, or usually if the study is in the morning, we ask them not to have anything to eat or drink after midnight. They are brought to the laboratory in a stretcher. They usually get an intravenous. Uh, the intravenous line is there to facilitate us giving sedatives and medications and whatever has to be given. They're put onto a table, which is a, a unique table in, in the electrophysiology laboratory. Albert, I'm going to give you something through your intravenous just to help you relax, okay? It's going to make you a bit lightheaded and a bit sleepy, all right? We give them uh, sedation before we uh, start to do any uh, instrumentation. And after the patient is sedated, we uh, give a little freezing or local anesthetic uh, into the region that we need uh, to work with, which is uh, usually the area at the upper part of the leg. The number of catheters that we actually have to put into the heart depends on exactly what problems we're expecting and where, uh, how many recording sites we need. Uh, in general, we put at least three catheters in and these go into a large vein called the femoral vein, which is in the upper part of the thigh or leg. Sometimes we need additional tubes, uh, and then we use most commonly the subclavian vein. We have uh, all the catheters in the heart. This catheter here is going back in a vein in the heart. This catheter that curls up here is going into the upper chamber, the right atrium of the heart. This catheter pointing down here is in the main pump right-sided pumping chamber of the heart, the right ventricle. And this catheter here is in a, in a region of the heart we call the His bundle region. Once the tubes are in, we take uh, recordings and then we try to turn on the patient's fast heart rhythm disorder. Uh, they might feel discomfort from the fast heart rhythm disorder uh, because obviously if they weren't bothered by it, they wouldn't be having the test. And they would also feel perhaps some unpleasantness at uh, our making the heart go faster or slower in order to turn on the rapid uh, heart beating. Other than that, there is no real uh, sensation of pain when the tubes are uh, in, in the heart. So from that point of view, it's, it's quite comfortable. Now what we're going to do is make uh, your heart race. We're going to pace your heart uh, at different speeds and we're going to make it race and then we're going to take some measurements. And once we've got those measurements, we'll know where that problem is and then we'll do our best to get rid of it. We produce our rhythm disturbances by what we call program stimulation of the heart, which is just another word for pacemaking. Uh, the heart has its own rhythm, and when we put our tube in, we are able to introduce our own rhythms. We are able to change these rhythms and make them erratic to turn on the patient's own tachycardia. 95% of the time, if not greater, we can reproduce the patient's own problem in our laboratory using these pacing techniques. 
We turn these rhythm disturbances off in the electrophysiology laboratory by the same techniques that turn them on. The recording tubes and the programmable stimulator can pace the heart, and once the rhythm disturbance is turned on, we can put our own pacing impulses into the abnormal rhythm and terminate it. This is not a painful or unpleasant procedure. In fact, patients are not aware when we are doing that. The length of the EP study really varies according to what the problem is and exactly what has to be done. An EP study can be as short as a half hour uh, if we are dealing with a very focused and uh, problem that will only take one or two tubes, one or two electrodes, and a short stimulation protocol. On the other hand, the studies can be very long and complicated depending on the problem, and we could be there for as long as six hours. When a patient is actually uh, going through the electrophysiology test, they may have various symptoms uh, throughout that test, which can be caused by us, uh, the nursing staff and the doctors in the laboratory, or they may be caused by the patient's rapid heart rhythm. Some of those symptoms include uh, sweating, um, which we refer to as diaphoretic, uh, tachycardia or a fast heart rhythm, uh, which they have probably experienced before, but th um, they may experience a new tachycardia while they are in the laboratory. We as nurses generally try to keep the patient distracted somewhat, although we do require that they lay very, very still. It's also very important for the patient to lie quietly due to the electrocardiogram recording so that we don't get a lot of interference when they move. Um, but we do try to provide back rubs when possible. Uh, sedation may be used and patients are encouraged to ask for sedation if they do require a little bit of something to tide them over with their nerves. If patients feel like drifting off and having a little snooze during the procedure, it's quite all right. Electrophysiology studies can be classified as diagnostic or therapeutic. In some cases, we want to just find out exactly what the problem is, and our goal is essentially just to find out what is the mechanism or what is driving that patient's fast heart beating because we may not have any idea. On, on the other hand, we can do therapeutic interventions. We can administer a drug to a patient. We can then re-stimulate the heart and see if that drug is likely to work if we give that drug to the patient when they go home. We can also do procedures that actually cure the problem. Uh, one of these is uh, what's called radiofrequency ablation. Uh, this is a uh, radiofrequency uh, ablating machine, and uh, this technology has really emerged in the last uh, several years. And with this uh, technology, we are able to actually cure the rhythm disorders at the same time that we're doing the diagnostic study. So. Once we get a catheter positioned right on the abnormal piece of the heart that we are trying to uh, get rid of, we hook it up to our machine, and this allows us to inject a little radio frequency current that creates a small scar on the heart where the problem is, and in effect cures the problem at the same time that we're doing the diagnostic study. We, we found where the problem is. It's over on the right side of the heart. So now we're going to take out one of the um, usual wires and put in the new wire for, for, for burning the spot in the heart, okay? To get rid of the problem. We put the catheter that we'll use to ablate the pathway, the catheter that we put the current through, up near the valve going into the right ventricle. And we will use the tip of that catheter and move it around the circular, the circumference of the valve looking for the extra wire or the pathway. This is becoming a much more prevalent way of dealing with cardiac arrhythmias. And in fact, in many laboratories, it's becoming the predominant theme for the laboratory is doing an electrophysiology study with the intent of ablating or actually get, getting rid of the arrhythmia problem. If we do a successful radio frequency ablation, then that patient is cured of the problem and does not require any more medication. Some problems cannot be cured by radiofrequency uh, ablation, and for those patients, we generally use a tactic of 
drug therapy, which we assess in the electrophysiology laboratory for its efficacy. So we give drugs on a trial and error basis in the laboratory, and immediately, or within a day or two, we can have some immediate feedback as to whether the drug will be effective or not. This gives the patient the confidence that even though we cannot cure the problem, at least the drug we are giving is going to be effective in preventing them from getting another tachycardia. Electrophysiology studies are in general excellent for predicting efficacy of antiarrhythmic agents or drugs uh, for uh, problems. And nothing is of course perfect because heart disease is progressive. Uh, if a patient has a problem in 1991 and a drug is effective in 1991, their pro pro problem may progress so that in 1992 it is no longer effective. There are other uh, vagaries of everyday life that we cannot reproduce in the electrophysiology laboratory, but in general it's fair to say that a drug predicted to be effective in the electrophysiology laboratory will be very effective uh, on the outside. Once patients have had this uh, procedure done, they're generally quite pleased that uh, none of the uh, fears that they had prior to the procedure have come true and they feel that uh, they would not particularly like to go through it again, but they wouldn't be quite as anxious should they have to go through it again. After the procedure, you will be returned to your room on a stretcher. Because the catheter insertion sites need to begin healing, it is best that you follow these simple rules. Stay in bed at least six hours. Try to keep your legs straight. It's okay for you to get off your back by rolling from side to side. Don't bend your knees. Keep your head on the pillow. Inform the nurse if you have any warmth, pain or swelling in the groin area. The nurse will be reminding you of these rules and making sure you're as comfortable as possible. After six hours, you should be able to get up and about. The EP study is the most comprehensive method for evaluating and treating your heart rhythm disturbance. I think that it is fair to say that the great majority of EP studies are entirely uncomplicated and most of the things that can go wrong are very minor. Uh, of approximately 2,000 electrophysiology studies in our uh, recent experience, we have not had a major complication in our laboratory and I think that this is uh, a fair comment for other well-established and uh, busy laboratories uh, in the country. You know, I was pretty concerned about going into my examination at the beginning. But after it was all over, even though it wasn't that enjoyable, it wasn't anywhere near as unpleasant as I thought it would be.